Hi, thank you for joining me for this week's art activity. My name is Jenny. I am a teaching artist at the De Young Museum. This week's project, a mixed media collage, is inspired by Ronald Lockett's work entitled Poison River, as well as our own concerns for the environment. Now, before I tell you the materials you might want to use, let's take a look at Ronald Lockett's Poison River. Enamel paint, red, grays, white, black with hints of blue, swirls around the surface. Ronald Lockett mixed and applied the paint in a way that is reminiscent of an oil spill. The title of the piece is Poison River. But can you see a river? The poison from the oil spill may make it challenging to see the life within. If you look very carefully, you may be able to make out fish, birds, a tree, as well as some deer. The first thing you'll need is a larger piece of paper for your work surface. I recommend watercolor paper if you have it. You will also need a variety of papers for all of your collage elements. There are so many different types of papers you could use. You could kind of go on a little scavenger hunt around your home, searching for different types of paper. Scissors, a glue stick or a bottle of glue, drawing pencil, watercolor paints, color pencils, and these drawing pens. Like Ronald Lockett, many of us have concerns for the environment right now. Here, where I live in Northern California, and maybe where you live too, we are experiencing the worst wildfires in recorded history. Oceans all over the world continue to warm, endangering sea life. There has been an immense amount of loss. There's also been so much resilience. Today with our project, we are going to think about a habitat and an animal that lives in that habitat. It could be somewhere very close to where we live. It could be somewhere far away, the North Pole for instance. And we are going to create a mixed media collage that shows that place, that shows that habitat and the animal that lives there in the healthiest, most nourished state. I'm going to share two different examples with you. One very quickly, and then the second piece I will actually go over in more detail. So the first piece that I'm showing you here, which is a mixed media collage of pelicans flying over the Pacific Ocean. The sky is clear, just a few clouds in the sky, and the ocean is clean. There's an abundance of fish for the pelicans. And this next piece of a northern spotted owl living in an old growth forest is the piece I would like to share the steps that I took to create it with you. The first thing I'm going to do is create a watercolor wash for my background. A wash is when you use lots of water and just a little bit of paint. With watercolors, water is really your best friend. And you'll notice that I'm using my largest brush. It looks like my cat wants to help create a wash too. So while I'm waiting for my watercolor wash to dry, I am going to tear all of my collage elements. I am tearing strips of paper from a brown paper bag to help create my old growth Douglas fir forest. This red paper would be nice for the berries in a forest. You could also, in addition to tearing, of course, use a pair of scissors for other shapes, especially if the shapes you're wanting are more specific. So here I was thinking about the silhouette of a Douglas fir tree. 
and I cut out this shape. As I'm cutting my pieces, I'm thinking a little bit about which pieces I might want to collage on top of one another. That's always fun to do, to layer your shapes just like that. My watercolor paper has dried and as you can see, I have already started to collage shapes onto my paper. So I have my sky and now I'm going to start thinking about the habitat, the old growth forest where the northern spotted owl lives. And I'm going to take that brown paper I tore earlier. I'm going to start playing around with possible arrangements. And when you know that you're really happy with your arrangement, that is when you can start gluing your pieces down. So I have glued down my strips of brown paper for the trees. And I have also added some bits of green. I am going to just glue down a few more shapes for the habitat before I start creating my northern spotted owl. So I have these specific tree shapes that I had cut out earlier. I have some cloud shapes left over. So I'll put those in the sky. Maybe the mist is coming in. I had cut out these red circles for berries. Just glue those there. Or maybe they should actually be grouped together against the green like that. So after you have finished collaging your habitat, you are going to want to draw your animal on a new sheet of paper. And when you're drawing your animal, you can draw from your imagination. You could also use visual references. I printed out a couple of black, black and white photographs of my Northern Spotted Owl. And the first thing I did was made a very light sketch of its body, kind of the largest shape I could find. And once I had that very light sketch of the body, I went back in and I sketched all of the details, its eyes and beak, and I used color pencils for the feathers and a little bit of pen for the face. If I wanted to, I could go back into the other wing here to add more detail and create more texture for all of the feathers. I think I might do that a little bit later. For now, I think I am ready to glue my northern spotted owl into its habitat. Right there. Now my northern spotted owl has its home. What type of habitat do you think you're going to create? Hmm. And what animal will call that place home? Take your time cutting, collaging, drawing, and painting. And when you are finished with your mixed media collage, find a friend or a family member to share it with. Here are some questions you could consider. And then finally, if you would like to share your work with us, and I certainly hope you do, please have an adult photograph your art and use the hashtag DayYoungsters. Thank you so much. Bye.